Hey, welcome back. This is the Losi Hammer Ray, and man, it is awesome. This is an absolute beast of a rock racing RC. It is supposed to be one-tenth scale, but I will tell you the thing is absolutely enormous. Uh, if it comes down to what scale is in this category of vehicle, we sort of give them a little bit of leniency. We don't expect everything to be one-to-one. -one. Uh, so this really isn't a one-tenth, even though that's what it's billed as. Um, it, the vehicle is closer to being like a one-seventh, but that's not what the Hammer Ray is all about. The Hammer Ray is all about Casey Curry's Hammer Run and the vehicle that he took there and Losi making a scale product that looks so awesome and performs so well. This is Casey Curry's Hammer Ray. Well, actually, that little picture right there. Where are we? Move it over. Okay, actually, that's Casey Curry's Hammer Ray. Anyway, but his Hammer Ray is black and red, but to do two offerings of colors, Losi decided to give us a green camo option and then give us Casey Curry's option. So if you notice, that's not a black and red camo option. It is uh, Casey Curry's colors. And then there's also the green and gray, which I went with and decided I'm gonna go pretty green crazy with it. But let's talk about how accurate this is to looking like Casey's vehicle. So we get Casey's headlights right up front. You'll notice there is not a Jeep grill here. They skip trying to get the Jeep logo. It saves us money and you can get a 3D printed part and put that on there and that's taken care of and done. Then we got the lights that are up front. So we've got those two LEDs up there, another light here. We got the light bar there. This spot that you see on the cage right there in the front, that's actually what it looks like on Casey's car. We have his uh, scale mirrors that are on there. Uh, the bump stops that are on here right there are just like on Casey's car. Casey has four that go around. If they put uh, two on ours, it would have limited our travel uh, too much. And if they put them back, it wouldn't look accurate. Um, all of the stickering here, you know, from, uh, what do we got? Spicer's drivetrain products to the Torco uh, fluids, the radiators that are in the back. So we got radiator, um, reservoirs there. We have fans uh, that are in the back that actually block out the view of the drivers. I think that's really cool that are back there. The Magnaflow exhaust up top, okay? Magnaflow makes the exhaust and then there's another company that bends it for Casey, which is pretty cool. The Fox oil uh, um, reservoirs that are attached to our cage, our fire extinguishers, our fifth uh, and functional tire with the wing nut attachment on the back of it. That is really, really cool. Um, inside the car, we have our drivers and our passenger who is our navigator. You see there, I'll get you better photos of that. But inside the decals have been done really well, just like outside. We got our Neato Tyler tires that are on there. We got a Neato sticker here, Curry sticker there, a big C for Curry in the front. These are KMC wheels that are on this vehicle. And the KMC wheels, it's not only on the inside rim of it, but it's also on the bead on the outside, which is kind of hard to do considering how small it is. And inside the rim, if you take a look or if you look on the back side of the vehicle, you'd be able to see that the car has faux disc brakes that are on there. Hope that focuses in for you. So it's got the KMC wheels. And then we have Neato. Um, grappler tires, these are called uh, trail grappler tires. So I used to have a set of mud grapplers on my truck, uh, my, my actual truck from Nido, which were phenomenal tires. Um, these are really cool because they have a thinner profile than what we're used to seeing, like on something like the Rock Ray, the 110 scale Rock Ray, but they are hard. They are a very dense foam. It's really cool. Um, the vehicle, like I said, is big. It is only inches smaller than a Traxxas UDR. The cage is pretty high, and therefore in the back, there is a sway bar and suspension setup on the rear trailing arm. That's what this is right here, because in the back of the vehicle, this sway bar is a faux sway bar. This is not real. This piece right here is not real. It's a faux sway bar to look like Casey's truck. We have the, um, the, the uh, cage that's in the back that protects his fuel cell back there. And we have this giant black box, this giant fuel cell that's in the back that makes the hind end of this vehicle even larger back there. So um, 
and the reason they have that is because Casey's truck runs like a 70 to 72 gallon tank because he's doing about 120 across the dunes and then he's also doing rock crawling so he's running this thing in four high and four low and the vehicle has to be able to handle it all. It's a U4 racing is a terribly tough terrain even on our RC cars so you can only imagine what these guys have to go through. And so these things are like completely customized all over the place. Um, our vehicle, if we tilt it up and we take a look at it, gets a beautiful, I'll do it this way on the camera, it's better. It gets a beautiful aluminum chassis on the bottom. There's actually a Nerf bar on the side right here. And um, in addition to that, we have the motor plate. See if I put my fingers on it. We got the motor plate right there. So if you want to, you can drop your motor to change your pinion gear out. Uh, you just have to be careful of the wires when you do that. But you can do that swap pretty easily because there is a metal motor plate. So I called this a motor plate. It's not a motor plate, but it is where the motor is mounted. And then when you put this back in, uh, there's, well, well, before you put it back in, there is a motor plate to swap out your pinion in case you want to run this thing on 4S, which you absolutely can do. They recommend 2S or 3S because that's what the ESC settings are for. I'll get to that in the manual in just a moment, but this thing is really, really awesome. Um, when it comes to the front of the vehicle, we got these awesome shocks that have these uh, uh, little uh, bump stocks or shock, da shock damperers that are in the bottom of them. Again, I'll have a photo if I don't get a good shot of it there. When we take a look at our control arms, our A arms, our control arms are completely solid here. And so we don't have to worry about dust and dirt and debris getting up inside them. Our links are fixed, meaning we don't have uh, turnbuckles that you would need constant adjustment on. So if anything breaks, you can just slap new ones that are on there. And then there are four of them. So there are two that are up top working as upper control arms. And then there are two on bottom that work for the steering. So uh, the possibilities of making different sizes for those in the future as this truck evolves are out there. So we could do a lot of customizations, including drooping or raising the vehicle and making it sort of like the new Sling King that came out. Losi's given us a lot of options of things to do with this, including taking all of the panels off and buying the set that comes with the black and red and swapping our drivers out for about $90. So you have the red version. The only thing you'd have to do is swap the tires. It doesn't look yet like Horizon Hobby or Losi are offering you the tires with the colored rim uh, uh, bead on it. Uh, it looks like they're coming black. And so you may be able to grab these off a guy who's decided not to use these uh, tires anymore, uh, but this thing is absolutely awesome. I wanna look at it, make sure I didn't miss any of the details that I wanted to tell you about specifically there uh, before we move to the rear. On the rear of the car, we have our solid axle. So front independent suspension, and then we have our rear solid axle going on here. It has two links up top, one here and then one here. And you're not gonna get a good view of that without me taking a picture, so we'll do that. We'll try it from the rear, okay? Um, I mentioned that fuel cell, that's hollow by the way. You could put a, a speaker in there if you wanna do Bluetooth audio or if you want to do motor sounds. You have a six channel receiver that's there that you can plug into, but do know this, if you're using the advanced uh, vehicle control or whatever they call it, the AVC that's on the DX3 that they give you with it, uh, it does become a four channel receiver. If you remove the AVC and you're not using it, you have all six uh, opened up to you to put in lights and everything else like that. If you decide to want to control it with like a DX5 or something like that. I wish they would make a DX6 surface controller. A DX6 is actually a thumbstick controller, but this thing is a, a beefcake, about 26 inches across here. It's over 11 and a half inches tall. I think it's almost 12 inches there. Um, the width is about a foot wide. The thing is an absolute monster. Um, it just it just looks great. I can't wait to take it out. The rear suspension I had mentioned, your, your actual sway bars are here. They're followed by a set of shocks um, that are adjustable. And then there's another set of damper shocks that come after them. 
Let's see if I can get that on video. If not, um, not many adjustments as far as where your shock towers can go. That would be on the after aftermarket stuff. In the front, you can actually change where the front shocks go, but on the top, you can't make many changes there. And in the rear, on the trailing arms, you can't make any changes there. But this thing is one solid beast. It's about 570, 580 US dollars, and I think it is absolutely awesome. The cage system and it being so tall and so big gives us a lot of different possibilities uh, as to what we're going to do with it in the future. Meaning, you know, when we start to really you know, uh, get crazy with this and start drumbling things out. So the first one I would talk about, uh, because it's, it's one of those conversations that other people are going to mention, is the battery. They've done this before on Rock Ray and on Baja Ray. So my battery's already in back here but I'm gonna show you what's going on. So basically, if I push back here on the rear suspension, there's a battery door. Your battery door is located right here, okay? And you flip this switch over to push it out and you open that door and your battery is in there. And it is a tight fit for um, anything that is a long 3S. Oh, let me unplug the battery first. A long 3S won't fit, but the Spectrum um, 5000 milliamp 50C series absolutely fits. The largest battery I had that I was able to fit was an 8000 milliamp uh, Z. Uh, but the problem is, as you can see, that, that they take the uh, your power wires, which are over here, and your data wires, which are over here, and they are separated. And because of that separation, when you go and you try to put this in the vehicle, you drop it in. By the way, I, I just made that look so easy. It's not that easy. If you go like this and you try to put it in, you're not going to get it in. So you got to actually push this thing back and slide it down. You then have to push this back and then you have to pull it and you have to put the door down here and you have to be careful not to, to crimp your cables. But that's where the battery door is. And inside the vehicle, you have a 3,150 uh, kilovolt motor, which has a huge heat sink on it. Picture's coming up and you also have your 130 amp ESC. Uh, so that's pretty much the basics of it. As far as upgrades go, mine are on the way. The ones that have come so far are my aluminum bulkhead, um, my aluminum uh, servo mount, which is very important to me. I don't like when servos uh, walk. And so the servo mount to me is one of the first upgrades that I would actually do um, after you take care of this one. Put a real sway bar on there. And one of the reasons I'm saying that is this vehicle is a little bit more top heavy. Top, top heavy. It's not a Baja Ray. It's not an Axial Yeti. It is not a Rock Ray. And it is taller. And so when it comes to widening the stance or getting the vehicle to stop from tilting over, uh, I think that having a sway bar on the vehicle is a good idea. So this is a true sway bar, which obviously means anti-sway bar or anti-roll bar. And so I'm gonna put that in the back and I got all other kinds of pieces of aluminum that are coming. You'll see that in future videos. For now, I think I've covered pretty much everything else on there. Oh, you know what's missing? I might as well just say it for Casey's sake, is that Casey has this huge GPS uh, thing that's on the top for his satellite navigation so he can be anywhere in the world and uh, get true satellite navigation going on. And then he has a huge antenna because of all the different GoPro and cameras that they're using in vehicle when he races. Plus there's a red um, taillight bar that's across the back. So I'm definitely gonna slap one of those on there. But this is it. This is the Hammer Ray by Losi. I think it looks awesome. I, I cannot wait to run the thing. And so that's what I'm going to do next after I explain to you some of the important things that are in the manual. And you, honest to God, you need to see this part. I said you need to see this part and I forgot to actually to tell you how to take the body off. And so this isn't some kind of clipless system or anything like that. This is pretty tough the way this thing is set up on there. So there are two screws that are in the front that have to come out. There's another screw here and here on this side. So there's two more screws that have to come out here. You have to pop off the sway bars, the, the fake sway bars that are in the back on the bottoms. And then you have to remove the screws across here. And then the body then goes and lifts off so that you can uh, work on it inside. But as a ready to run, uh, I, I pretty much make it, unless unless I can do it easily, I pretty, just, pretty much make it so that I can just slap the, bot, the battery in 
and just go and see how the car does. And because I have upgrades here and more on their way, I will be taking this body off and doing work on it. And so after it's run, it's dirtied up and everything else like that, that's when I'll remove it. But let's get into the manual because there's something you need to see about the manual and the controller on a hammer ray. All right, so real quick in the box, you have uh, four batteries for your controller. There are uh, servo, horn uh, mounts that are there, so you can change from 23 to 22 to 25 uh, tooth. And then you have this 2S battery stay. Um, I had actually men mentioned something about, oh, when you start dremeling and things like that, that's what I was referring to, is that when people want to use uh, different batteries in their car and they don't want to uh, uh, be pigeonholed into Spectrum because they are expensive, the 4S Spectrum, uh, which I have over here, let me grab this for you. Just to give you an idea, size-wise, so the thing absolutely fits inside it. This is the uh, 5,000 milliamp, 14.8 volt, um, but it's only a 50C uh, dump that's on this thing. It fits inside there. Going any larger 4S. Real quick, as I was uh, taking a look at what I was about to put out there so you guys could see, I accidentally used the word dump instead of continuous discharge. If you see 120C, that means 120 continuous uh, discharge. That's not your dump. Your dump rate on a 120C battery could be up to 240, could be 200. Um, there are some companies that tout what it could be and they say up to or they say exactly what it is. But I think uh, from testing, people have been uh, noticing that they're not getting what it's actually said on the batteries. It seems to me like more of the batteries, I keep looking at them over there, that's why uh, I'm doing that. Uh, it seems to me that more of the batteries are saying less, my Death Wish coffee mug, are saying less about what the actual dump rate is because you don't get the same dump at every pull um, with some of the batteries that are cheaper. Even though they're great batteries, you're always not getting the same amount. So I gotta mention that now during the battery section. You have to take some measurements to see if it's going to fit. Otherwise, you'll either have to lose the door, dremel the tray in the back, or lose the tray entirely and put straps in, which is what a lot of guys do. However, I have found a couple batteries that I'm happy with trying uh, to start with, which of course is the good old um, 50C uh, 3S from Spectrum, um, a new Huvo, which is a 120C dump, uh, 5500 I believe it is, yeah, 5500 milliamp, which fits, and then the one uh, that was the largest, that uh, 3S, that I was able to fit was my 8,000 milliamp Z, which is a 100C continuous dump. But I do have a Sokakin uh, 4S that's on the way that is supposed to be similar in size to the Huvu. Um, so let's talk about running 4S and talk about the parameters of the vehicle because this is very important when we talk about the DX3 and what you just got when you bought your hammer ray or uh, are thinking about getting one. Inside your manual, there's a page you need to pay attention to. Specifically, if you were a Rock Ray owner or you were a um, Baja Ray owner, it is a different setup on the ESC, on the 130 amp ESC, than you got with your car. If you had a 1 10th Rock Ray, you were set at 100% for your punch, okay? Um, if you have a um, Baja Ray, you are set up at five for your punch. If you get a Hammer Ray, you are set up at four for your punch. And what do I mean by that? Well, in the areas that look like they're redacted, okay, they're actually blacked out, that's actually how your car comes. And so this ESC, because it's so um, uh, controllable, um, programmable is the word that I'm looking for, um, it has your running mode set at forward reverse and brake. Your drag brake force is set at zero. Your low voltage cutoff is three volts. Your punch level is set at four. It is set at four. Why? Well, probably people see 130 amp spectrum ESC, which they used to bill as being a 6S ESC, and they throw a 4S or 6S battery in there with an 11 tooth pinion that's in the vehicle and they go to tear it up through some tall grass and they burn the motor out like that. And so what has happened here, if you were to compare manuals from the Baja Ray and the Rock Ray, you would find that they made some changes when they got to Hammer Ray. And that includes that your initial punch, the hard pull, 
it is only giving you a punch level of four when it goes all the way up to nine. Why is that important? Well, on our uh, controller, okay, you have a switch on there which is 50, 75, and 100. So at your 100%, when you pull for punch, you are still not at 100% if your punch level is set to four. So you need to know about how to change that. In addition, there are uh, brake forces and reverse forces that are here that need to be uh, addressed. The first one we're gonna talk about is brake force. So your initial brake force, which is drag brake, is set to zero, which means your car is just going to just completely roll. And then when it comes to your maximum brake force, meaning the maximum brake that gets applied, forward ver reverse with brake is at 50%, okay? That brake level, okay, your drag brake force and your maximum drag brake can be set from zero all the way to 100%. So if you start racing this thing and you're going heavy into the corners and you are getting that roll, you can actually apply some brake so that the car will actually start to slow down when you let your finger off of the trigger. Uh, right now, it is set up so that there is zero applied when you let your finger off the trigger. Well, that's according to what this says here. We're going to test it in the field and see if it's true to what it says on here or if it's different. In addition, um, when we go to our timing, your timing is set at 15 degrees. It goes from zero degrees all the way up to 26.25. So that is an adjustable timing for your motor as you're running different spectrum motors in there. And what was the other thing that I wanted to tell you that was on here? Counterclockwise uh, motor rotation, lipo cells. That has an auto calculate for your lipo cells, but you can decide to put it in 2S, 3S, or 4S. However, if you look in the manual about putting a 4S battery in there, even running it on 3S batteries, they recommend that if you're going to go to a higher 3S, let's say 120C dump 3S, that you actually gear down the vehicle, which means going up in teeth on the pinion. So you might wanna put a 14 or 15 tooth pinion in there if you start to experiment with a 4S battery. Why? Because if you have too much punch in the battery and you uh, uh, start to tear those tires up and they're really uh, going, you could wind up burning up that motor pretty quick. So in other words, if you're going through the grass and that thing is just going and it's plowing through and it's doing what you want it to do, um, there is a chance that you could burn the motor out. And so that's why they're recommending two to three S with the caveat that yes, your 130 amp will handle four S, but there are some adjustments that could be made in here that will help you with what you wanna do with the vehicle. So if you were gonna run it like a true U4, you may wanna put a little bit of drag brake on there so when you go up over a hill and you come down, the thing actually has a little bit of a stall to it and you don't just go flying down the hill. Now, I'm mentioning that drag brake because on the uh, controller, the DX3, you have your throttle trim, your steering trim, your brake rate, your, your steering rate, your steering neutral and reverse, your, or normal and reverse, uh, throttle normal and reverse, and then your throttle limiter, and then your AVC, which you can turn all the way off or you can turn on. However, your brake force is actually going to change based on what your brake programming is. So if your brake programming, pr programming is set at 25% and you turn this all the way up, it only goes up to the full 25%. It's not going to go to 100% brake force. But that's something that we need to test in the field, so that's something I'm gonna be doing because I'm gonna be running it on 3S and I have my 4S uh, in the mail. I do wish they'd come out with a DX6. I mentioned that uh, before. Um, I am really excited about running the hammer. I forget all this stuff. Take one last look before we go and we run this thing.
Sure.